So we'll, we'll start with it really simple. And it's simply this. How are you doing? Someone take me away. We are we're pretty good. Busy. But um, yeah, just basically wrapping everything up for the EP coming out on Friday. Yeah. We're just, we're, we're, our, yeah, like I said, like Adam just said, our EP comes out on Friday. So we're just literally just, yeah, you know what it's like, busy, busy, like busy, busy, making everything work, and trying to make sure everything's ticked off. But <laughs> background admin shit and yeah. scheduling posts. Formally, we're good. How are you, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing fine. Good busy, right? Though, like, it is a good yeah. busy. That's the thing. Busy is busy, but it's good. I don't know. Yeah, exactly that, man. We're like, we're really excited to release the EP and stuff. And like, yeah, to have the people receive the, the singles so far. It's been fucking sick. So we're, we're buzzing. We're buzzing about it. Is that is that the, is that the vibe in the whole band buzzing? Yeah, okay. yeah. We we had practice on Sunday, and we all were like, oh, shit, it comes out on Friday, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. So we're all kind of like just in such like kind of work mindset to get through and like make sure everything's fine. And then you're five days away from release and you're like, oh shit, that literally comes up this week, man. Yeah, we should literally. be, we should be more excited. And I think Sunday just kind of solidified that. Yeah. I feel, I feel like the time like recently, the, like the last year or so has just gone so quick. I'm not sure if it's the same for you or like, I'm not really think, but it's just like, oh my God, like it feels like we've just been rushing, rushing, rushing. And now it's like, oh my God, it's here. It's like, what the fuck's going on? But it's like, it's good you've got that vibe though because the long build to any release can sometimes feel uh can sometimes drag particularly as musically you know you might have finished it up many many months in some bands and artists it could be like a year and you've already moved on mentally so the fact that you've still got a vibe is great because we are as you said a mere few days away from the release of your brand new ep drowning out this friday march 15th so what does it mean to you to release this i guess well, basically, like, we had a bit of a lineup change, what was it, about midway through last year? Yeah, yeah. Um, So basically, it was me and Sam that wrote these songs over Discord, like, partly during the end of COVID, like, depends when you put the end of COVID, really, but it was mm. about end of 2022, mm. we'd finally finished up these songs, or at least got the ideas down, so... It was nice, because we were always really gassed on them, and then it was going to be a bigger album, essentially um but we just kind of cherry picked the best songs we had and we just feel the cp's like a lot more it's kind of the most like consistent work we've done that's how i feel about it anyway yeah, i feel it's more consistent across as a release yeah for sure i feel like it's it's like we've very much like just we knew what we wanted to do with the cp i feel like it's just like straight up from the fucking get-go it's just aggression and aggression we're just trying to punish people basically from the sec the, the second they turn it on so it's gonna hopefully hope everyone is sort of writing it, but uh, be cool. Did you did you have a vision uh, at the earliest point? Because you just mentioned that an album was a possibility. Um, why did that not come to fruition? I think, well, we were writing a lot of stuff over Discord at the time, and it would mainly be me sat in this room, like on my computer, on the mic with Sam over the road, and basically just kind of directing each other into what we wanted. Yeah. Um, sometimes doing it over Discord, you could get lost in translation. You don't get the proper stuff. You can't literally have your mate pick up the guitar and be like, "Oh, what about this?" Yeah, exactly. So we felt some of the songs were a bit hit. Some of them were a bit miss, or or they were too too different in terms of like what we were trying to achieve with the songs we are putting out. Hmm. So they've kind of been like they'll probably be recycled back into other content to be used and stuff, but. Didn't really feel it was the wisest thing to do on this release, did we? No, especially as like obviously we had like we had like Adam said previously we had like the lineup change and stuff. So we'd like we really kind of wanted to like just put something out like that was like maybe short and sweet that like, just kind yeah. of summed up what like the band was all about straight away. So like especially with like Bobby and uh, like Pat and, like Pat coming in and like it's just been like we we all like we're all on the same page like finally I think of like what we want to do like we and then we're finally like as a unit we're all like really I think driven towards doing a certain kind of thing and like just making it so aggressive and just from making it trying to push the aggression as far as we can and i feel like those five tracks that we're about to drop off the, the best sum like the best of those ones we did by far yeah for sure mm -hmm. a great summation of where you are right now uh following um obviously the turbulent period of covid you came through it here you stand in 2024 with a new release. So it's simply all guns blazing. This is not a starting pistol, so to speak, because it's not like you went away, but ultimately it is, let's get going, rolling. Yeah, yeah exactly pretty much. Right. We didn't want to slow down, did we? Mm. Uh, we, we didn't have much of a choice. 
Yeah, that's it. Sometimes you've got to take it a bit slower, especially when like your lineup changes so much. You need to get everyone back on the same page. And yeah, no. I feel like we've done it as quick as we can with retaining quality. No, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure. Was there ever <laughs> was there ever a point, particularly to say lineup changes? You kind of stuck at home during a long period of COVID. Was there ever a point where you thought that ah, this isn't gonna this isn't gonna survive? Yeah, what to be fair, like yeah, we've definitely all had our doubts about it, haven't we? Like yeah. about just kind of. I mean, you've been being in the band's hard enough and kind of it's a it's a stressful thing. Like, yeah, the payoff's massive when it goes well and like you put out your art and it's really like gratifying. But yeah, I think we've all been there, especially when like, the money's coming out for all the costs of EP and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. it drains you. Like we're all working full time still. So Yeah. And especially with like us being independent, like we don't really when obviously we're not getting any help from like like for labels and stuff. And obviously we're trying to conduct ourselves exactly how we should be conduct ourselves. And it's just oh bro, it's just like can I uh, what can I eat yet? Like, do not yeah. like <laughs> But it's, it's all good. We're having fun. we're having fun, and that's the main thing. Right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're not alone as well. Remember that you're in the same boat. Who the hell out there is making money off music anymore? Let's be honest. The unless you're the largest, biggest band that was blew up in the eighties. Uh, um, you're not yeah. Mate, like Taylor Swift makes a couple of quid. Yeah, I reckon. But, I reckon I reckon at least a tenner. So what do you what do you hope listeners take away from this EP? I mean, when we wrote it, I definitely had the intention of like, I just want it to be like, yeah, like we're going for aggression, aggression, but we want it to kind of be fun. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the whole point of it. It's fun to play. Yeah. It's fun to watch live. Yeah, it's like it's just pure enjoyment, I guess, is like what we were going for with it. I, yeah, I know exactly. that's definitely what I was going for when writing instrumental stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I know the lyrics are a bit more. They're a bit, yeah, the lyrics are a bit like fucking dark, but like I feel like if, if you're going gonna to do something like, write something that's so dark you almost want it to be like you want to present it in like, like a fun way a fun way that like people can beat the fuck out of each other too at a show especially like because ultimately we're a live band right like do you know what i mean especially like, this whole genre of music is a live band like a live sort of genre of music and i feel like some of the people having fun at the shows and moving around and fucking beating each other up i think that's pretty sick like i'm pretty cool with that <laughs> yeah if we can get music to make people think like this sounds so much fun imagine what this would be like live and yeah, people exactly. come to the shows and it is that much fun yeah exactly then i'm happy mate yeah and especially with like the concept like the lyrics we write and stuff like it is like very dark and all about mental health so to be able to sort of like present that in a, in a fun way it's just it's quite like therapeutic for me i find in a way do you know what i mean well, it very much is that, isn't it? Um, you can have fun, but it doesn't mean you're not going to feel something, uh, particularly from a live perspective, because I actually 100% agree with what you're saying there. It's you're very much a 50-50 band in my eyes, where 50% is what you hear in the record, but the other 50%, of course, comes from how you perform in the live environment. Speaking of which, of course, um, you do have some shows coming up. You want to run through I mean, what you got coming up? Yeah, so we've got uh, yeah, so we've got like uh, some headline shows coming up for uh, to celebrate. Obviously, like grounding coming out and stuff in April. And uh, yeah, so we're headlining in London on April eighteenth, uh, and then we're headlining in Southampton on the nineteenth. Uh, and it's hopefully going to be some real fucking fun shows. Like yeah, man. that's the thing. Um, we're just we're excited about them. Hopefully and of course, if you. Yeah, if you're in my city, which is London, it is the Black Heart you are playing as well. So if you really want to experience what you're talking about and what I'm saying, the live, that sweaty ass room, hopefully sweaty by April, will be the perfect place for it. I love that venue. Oh, uh, mate, yeah, I love that's, it. That's exactly why we wanted to do it there because obviously we like we wanted to play an event, like play in a venue, like especially with the, it's such like it's an important kind of show for us because obviously we're celebrating like drowning coming out and stuff. And we just wanted to do it in a venue that we we all love and we think it's really sick and like yeah. and we know it's gonna like we get you get people in that room it's just gonna be a sweaty little mosh fest and it like you know you know you you know if you've been there before like yeah you know you've been I mean? the black heart from metal show yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so we just yeah I, I feel like we've really tried to keep these shows especially like a hundred cap shows because we just want them to just go off and be absolutely fucking yeah ridiculous. be intimate you know <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, has the phenomenal reaction to the songs released from uh, the EP already kind of helped your easier mind as how the full thing will likely be released? You know, three out of five are out there now, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. It. Well, yeah, I think it has, to be honest with you, because obviously, like, we've, like, I'm not sure if, like, you know, like, much about art, like, we, but previously we had, like, some legal issues and we changed our name and stuff, so, like, this is where we're at now. So we had, like, a, it's quite, that was quite a big reset. Like in a way, like as you know, like it's as a massive reset change in your band, like your name as a band. 
So it was really like, we were kind of scared, like when we were doing this whole process, like, oh my God, it's like, and we, we just lost all momentum. Yeah, because we've been doing this for like years and it's like, oh, now it's been taken away. But like, honestly, I feel like we've almost hit a new market. And yeah, like, it's cool. Yeah, and like these, these like, Obviously, last year we played a lot of shows. Like we supported bands like Throne and like Heart of a Coward, and, like a play, like Attack Fest. So we had a lot of really good opportunities, and I feel like yeah, it's, it's like the people that are people that stuck around and kind of sort of stayed with us a bit, and maybe like a lot of new more people have discovered us than would have potentially been. So I think it's ultimately really positive. Yeah, I think um, it has actually, weirdly enough, benefited you. Uh, now things have settled yeah. in particular. Um, you mentioned last year and the amount of incredible shows you did. Um, really, really impressive. Do, do, do you have a, a favourite show moment from last year? I say, I'd actually probably say Throne because it was in yeah. suburbia in Southampton, which again is like a super intimate venue. Mm. Throne are obviously doing really well at the moment, super popular, mm. sold out show. Yeah, everybody just... moshing, yeah. and even for our set when we had some technical issues, mm. didn't even matter. Yeah. We just had people going absolutely crazy just to like look out and not even like two feet in front of me. There's someone literally, <laughs> <laughs> but literally, it was like it's like I was literally like at the front. You can see me on there's like a video somewhere. I don't know where the video is, but you <laughs> just see me like I'm just going up. And then you see me look. Yeah, yeah you like, this, like this look punch. of concern on my face. I'm like, oh no! I'm like, what? Like, what? That was our, that was our first show with Bobby, wasn't it? it? Yeah, that was yeah, that was our first show with Bobby. Um, and that, that sounded really good as well. The sound was great that night. Oh, so exactly. Yeah, it just kind of ticked all boxes for me. Yeah, it was a fun one. And two, it was like the first show we ever played as well. Like the first show we like played, and there was a lot of people singing the lyrics back as well. Yeah, and honestly, and it was it was like a bit mind blowing that show. Like I found in a way, but because it was just like, oh my god, people actually listen to this shit. Yeah, like, this is like this is not, <laughs> like, but um, but now we had Valid. so many last year. Like honestly, like Tech Fest was great. Heart, like Sporting Heart of Cow was great. Like mm. touring, I, I headline shows with Spitting Teeth were great. Like we feel very, 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 very lucky to have the opportunities. Yeah, we for have. sure. Mm. And that momentum is just nicely rolling on. As you say, right, the first couple of months are flying by of 2024, but now we are almost at the point of release of the EP and then you've got to have the shows as well. With those three tracks that were released, we've got Drowning, Lurk, Nothing Left. Um, of those three, which reaction uh, from the people that have been listening to it has surprised you the most and why? Um, to be honest with you, I feel like, I think uh, like Nothing Left has been, yeah. like, because people are like, that did like really well, like, just people just like random people that we didn't like never had anything to do with our band before were just commenting on us about oh we had a lot of new people kind of interacting with the pages and commenting and stuff which was really cool because when we released lurk we're like right we've rebranded we believe this song is a actual banger that's why it's the first single Mm. and then it didn't quite do as well as we'd hoped nothing left comes out and it does like way more than we'd ever hoped the first song would do yeah so it was it was really nice to see kind of more new people that none of us know that just like our band because the band's called cool instead of like I'm your mate so I have to like your band. No, you know exactly that, isn't it? and it's and it's it's just nice to see that like people actually like us responding to it. You know what I mean? Because mm. it must be it's like it's a it's like a real dark song and it's really fucking heavy too. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's not a, a song that you'd obviously put out as a single. Maybe it is now. Like do you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, but yeah. So it's just it's just weird. Like it's just weird that people like that like that one, but then I get it. Like yeah, like, don't mean that because we asked what we wrote it for. So there you go. Well, on that then, I have to ask, why do you think the sound of in depth is resonating so strongly with not just your old fans but also new people? I don't know. I think the sound still sounds like obviously we used to be we used to be Dream Eater, and there's mm-hmm. the, that kind of ident- identity is still there to a degree. Yeah. But I feel everything that we did well, we've done better. Yeah. And all the things that we weren't so good at, we've either replaced with something else that we're good at. Mm. So I'm I'm hoping that identity's kind of stuck around with us. So mm. we've still got our existing old fans that are legacy fans, if you want to call them that. Yeah. Um, versus the people that we're picking up with the new stuff. It's it's a lot more aggressive, it's a lot more kind of focused in the hardcore kind of inspirations that we take now whereas yeah. i think the last stop was definitely a bit more mixed bag yeah for sure i feel like like the like especially with cold our last album like i feel like we just we didn't really know like what we wanted to do as an entire piece and yeah. that's why there's so many different ideas on that tried a bit of everything on that we? record yeah like it's got like drill elements it's got like massive choruses it's like and then like fucking horrible breakdowns but i feel like, yeah i feel like we've really refined like what we want to do at this point um because we just 
we just want to make fucked shit that people be like be up to. You know what I mean? So it's just like yeah, it's fun. Yes. Yeah. Narrow that down now. That, that narrow that down a bit for me, though, if, if you can. What? Where? How have you got to this stage? It, yeah, you can put some of it down to obviously the the lineup change and where you are now as a group. But is there something else that has got you to this point where you are, where you feel like you're at your refined best? No, um, see, I don't, I don't, th- I don't really like think we're at our best. But then I don't think we'll, we'll ever be at our best. And I like, I feel like I want to keep that, like, yeah, that, that whole attitude because I feel like if we're not, mm. then what are we really doing? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't want to but... put out a song, say this year or next year or the year after, and be like that's mm. the best song I'm ever going to release. Because no, yeah, then exactly. what are you going to do afterwards? Exactly that. And it's but I, honestly, I just feel like we just every time we go to do new music, we always have new influences and new ideas, like to things, and we we're always trying to do something that is a bit different like because we we really do want to do our own thing like ultimately like when we want to make our own niche and like do you know what i mean we don't want to like copy like the playbook or anything but so i feel like we're, we're just going to keep evolving i feel like and i feel like there's not really been a moment really because i feel like we've just always worked like cohesively together mm-hmm. like we always known like what we wanted to do and like it's been actually like we're a very like stress-free kind of band in terms of how that mm-hmm. kind of thing kind of works everything's kind of like very organic i find you yeah know what I mean? There's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing wrong with saying best. It's how it's worded. You just changed the word slightly to being the best thing you've released right now. So far, yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. far, exactly. It's <laughs> in marketing, like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, kind of focusing on the lyrics specifically and really inspiration behind them. Because, of course, there is a lot of personal stuff in this, and they say to yourself there is some darkness to it. But how yeah. much of this comes um, from a combination of internal, t- t- looking internally, but also looking externally? Because all you have to do is open your bloody window and see the state of things to find inspiration. Well, exactly that, mm. man. Like, that's why it's almost it's almost so easy to do that. Like, do you know what I mean? Because, like, I've had, like, obviously there's pers- a lot of personal stuff too, but, like, songs like Nothing Left, like, they're not about, like, I, I wouldn't, like, like to explain it because i like people to take people like take what they want from the songs of course but like there's so much suffering going on around the world and like songs like nothing left i'm sure everyone can relate to like it's some, like feeling like you've got nothing left in the world and especially like you look at like the ukraine scenario and like what's happening in like gaza and like all these people like suffering for like what like do you know what i mean like all this like shit, shit is just going like, wrong and like it's really, I feel, I find it's it's really easy to like go get, get lost in your own mental health problems and like mm. and, like sort of really like that's kind of where I went with it. Like it's like I'm complaining about all these issues that are like so pathetic and these people are like there's people dying like getting all the mm. fucking like and it's yeah and it's it's about using I suppose that those negative emotions to make to create something positive and just like yeah you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not very good at articulating it, but... <laughs> no, no, you've articulated that perfectly, because ultimately, particularly... The su- on the wider scale, I, I I wonder, because I'm not a lyricist, I can't write uh, lyrics or anything like that, and I do wonder sometimes when there's so much going on in the world that narrowing it down and finding a way to speak your own thoughts about a big bloody issue, as you said, just using some of the ones you used an example, I would yeah. find impossible. And then on a personal front, I know it takes a certain level of strength and belief in yourself to be able to open up like that. Is that something you're getting more comfortable with, with age, becoming more open and comfortable with how you're expressing yourself? I think so. Like, do you know what I mean, I think that is definitely something that, like, I've definitely always tried to work at because I've always been like, it's very like a bottle up kind of guy. Do you know what I mean? I've like, but like, yeah. Not... I mean, I've noticed it when we've been tracking because mm. when we tracked cold and everything, like, yeah, that was pretty personal then anyway. But just yeah. seeing the difference in the lyrics for like this release, you just stepped it, stepped it even more up, like in the misery. <laughs> um, but yeah, then... well, it's not even that. I think it's also like, just kind of, I don't know, is is better explained whilst also still being vague enough where you can take what you yeah. want from it yeah mm. that bit, like, this is the me show i'm upset this is me yeah and that's like ultimately like because ultimately you i, I want to just re- like i want people like to relate to it like do you know what i mean so i don't want to like be putting out so things that are so specific to like so like a scenario like do you know what i mean because i don't want people like I don't want to explain like my issues like to every the world like do you know what I mean like not in like a kind of way but it's it's also good to like vent about your feelings like to an extent because obviously like and almost like using like those exterior things is almost like a really good way to like sort of like rationalize it I find mm. it's, like it's almost like oh this is probably like how this feels like I, mean, I feel like with like with cold like I was going through a lot of 
like emotional stuff at that time and I was I'm a bit of like a method kind of guy like do you know what I mean I try to get like put myself in like head spaces like especially when I'm like upset or something I'll be like okay I'm really upset how would this how would like this guy respond to like being this upset or something like mm. that if I was going through this how would this feel like and trying to use those emotions to almost create something a bit realer if you know what I mean so I'm actually drawing from actual when I'm upset you know <laughs> well I'm sure uh Adam would agree with me that uh, the lyrics on this EP on these tracks are phenomenal um but then it's a phenomenal EP overall gentlemen absolutely fantastic work and as far as getting the name of in-depth into the ears of listeners worldwide it feels like you're kind of doing everything you can at the moment so what do you see as the biggest challenge to getting more people to hear your music i don't really know it's like, tricky isn't it it is a tricky one mm. I, I, mm. I feel like it's just it's that's like what you say it's just getting people I, to listen to music isn't it? yeah i think it's breaking out the saturation that is currently like this genre yeah. in general i mean there's like you were saying like we're trying to do something that's kind of we're not trying to follow anyone else's formula mm. but obviously we do obviously take our probably obvious inspirations from bands yeah um yeah, it's kind of breaking through that and showing people that we're not just another, like, not loose copycat or alpha yeah, copycat, exactly. whoever you want to call the copycat. But because of course, we obviously we love those bands like Knock Loose, like Throne, like we got to do it your way, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. but we, obviously we don't want to copy those bands. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. Like, oh. it's, it's a very difficult genre. I feel like to sort of make something that does sound unique and i feel like we're just going to keep trying to grow yeah with that, yeah we'll just keep mean? trying different stuff yeah and i feel like that will always come with time do you know what i mean but we, we're no i get it <laughs> i get it but i'd add there as well like in almost any form of media there's nothing really unique anymore the difference is is if what you're doing is it good like yeah. that's what matters more than anything else if you're half asking it you're going to be found out no, no, exactly that, isn't it? and like when we we always try to do everything with our full ability. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. like we ain't got nothing else to do. Do you know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as the rest of twenty twenty four goes, you know, we got the EP out this week. We've got the shows coming up next month. What plans can you share beyond that? If you can share anything, so yeah, we've got like, so we've got some shows coming up, and we've got some more tours coming up. So like, like we are a bit under wraps at the moment, so we can't really talk yeah. about them. Uh, <laughs> which is frustrating, obviously, because now, uh, but yeah, lots more shows, hopefully. Yeah, a lot more shows, and then we're just gonna we just want to keep just like keep getting in the studio and recording and yeah, like making new music. Cause, writing like, more. Yeah, I feel like that is like ultimately the most important thing. Like it's just that like, we we keep we we keep putting out music because ultimately that's what is gonna grow our band. Do yeah, you know I mean, like we we can we can play shows and do all these things, but obviously the music is the most important thing right you know what i mean and we just love making music so like we, we just can't wait to just, just keep going with it really seems like you've got your you got your priorities straight in regards to the fact that you know you've got to keep the ball rolling you can release something you can do your shows but ultimately if you don't do anything for six months you yeah. will quickly be buried you know oh uh, i gather from what we talked about at the start that you kind of understand to a degree the game you've got to play when it comes to social media um and promotion and um streaming and stuff and all that do you think you've got a good handle on that side of things I, i've got a handle i'm not sure about a good handle. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, like... Got at least like a couple of fingers on the handle but yeah. that's it really you know i mean i know what the like. most like yeah 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 which well, i mean we try we try and keep it interesting and post what we can without just posting rubbish yeah uh, people just scroll past because that's again you think about the amount of bands that post stuff on a day-to-day -day basis how do you break through that how do you get people to share your thing yeah how do you get people to share and like your stuff and show their mates all this like crazy guitar playthrough you posted or something like that no exactly so i think we're getting better at it as we go through and you know yeah. In the run up to an EP, you get lots of practice to post and see what interactions work and what don't. But yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, and we've been like endlessly, like I've been endlessly scrolling at night, going like, which is the best time to post? Which is in in mm. the in the US specific time? And it's just like it gets to a point though where you're just like, this is fucking ridiculous, and it this is not what being in a band's about. Like, it's, you know, it's not what you feel, is it? <laughs> like, but it's um, but now which we 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 try and do you know what I mean? Fortunately, we've got like a lot of really good people around us who um give us a lot of tips all the time. That, yeah, we've got um, a good team. Yeah, so we're we're very lucky in that regard as well. But yeah, you're doing the best you can. Yeah, you're doing the best you possibly can. Um, you're not alone in that regard. And hell, in six months, twelve months down the line, the algorithm will change, and everything you learned will be pointless anyway. 
Yeah, like, this is it. Isn't it? Like, you just got to keep moving with it. You get good at it, and then it's like, oh, for nothing. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> Slaps you around the face. Oh, actually, you can't put P, the letter P, in any captions anymore because it kills the algorithm. Oh, it kills your reading. I don't. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's so depressing. All right. Um, talk to me then, if you can, about the long term vision you have for in depth. Do you have one? Can you picture, if I said to you, not where you'll be in 10 years' time, but what the next 10 years might look like, would you be able to give me an idea? I think, really, like a, a step for us is just consistently putting out the best yet music we've done um that that's definitely one of my like more personal goals is just to write the best thing i possibly can oh, yeah, same as that. um and at the same time just growing the band and the brands mm. so i mean whether that's jumping on bigger tours whether that's becoming yeah. something else depending on what the industry looks like in five to ten years you know we no idea how it's going to change so i think at the moment we are playing it kind of day to day yeah just trying to keep a hold on everything and what we can and can't do mm. what's going to help what's not going to help but yeah ideally like some bigger tours you know yeah. i'd love to go out with like some of the bands that inspire us to oh, what music course. we do yeah for sure man um more festivals yeah that'd be thing. that'd be great yeah playing tech festival. fest was so fun yeah tech fest was great right? like yeah like to, to be honest like I, like in the next like i'd love to play download in the next like 10 years or like oh yeah like or festivals like that do you know what i mean because ultimately like you grow up dreaming about playing things like that do you know what i mean and, um but i feel like that's only gonna come if we keep releasing music and keep being consistent yeah so i think ultimately like in the, in the next 10 years as long as we can keep releasing 10 mu i like releasing music consistently and keep people keep the brand brand growing and keep everyone like Keep everyone having fun. I think that is ultimately like all I could ever ask for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As long as people are enjoying it. Basically, just keep doing what you're doing, really. Yeah, yeah. man. Just keep keeping the energy up. Don't don't slow down. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, because it's all it's all good to say you want to do all these things, like, but ultimately you just if you not you got you got you got to just grind it, you know. Like, you know, <laughs> that's the thing, and like fingers crossed that people like it. So it's just yeah. yeah. I, I, I find it highly unlikely that uh, anytime soon things are going to change significantly, e.g. you're going to now start getting 99% of your profits from streaming services and stuff like that anytime soon. So oh, yeah. Fingers crossed, mate. Yeah, do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> industry's fucked. But do you know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's stop making money. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just have some fun. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This is Ozzy Osbourne, and in his head are random cards of everything and everything, including many submissions from bands and artists from uh, around the world. I will be pulling some at random, and uh, if you'd both offer me an answer, please. Pick up Ozzy Osbourne, mate. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Adam, what does the word comfort mean to you? Uh, the right meal and my bed, you know. I'm a bit of a foodie. I love my food. Mm. Um, like a proper comfort meal, something that's like, I don't know, like good shepherd's pie. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Shepherd's pie in bed, mate. Shepherd's pie in bed. <laughs> yeah, that's comfort, like, yeah. Bliss, though. Yeah. That's like, fairness. Sounds good. Well, whack on a film. Yeah. Mate, sounds bliss. Yeah. All right, Sam, do you believe in ghosts or spirits? Oh, God. Oh, oh like, that's the fucking question, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'd love to, like, do you know what I, mean? I really, I like, I'm a bit on the fence about it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm convinced that it's not, but I also would love to believe it is. If uh. like, like, because I love, I love almost like when you go to like a haunted place and you like you freak yourself out about it. Like, do you know what I mean? I always, I always go like, oh yeah, there's, there's ghosts in there, ghosts in there. But I like, get so, in so in my head like that I freak myself out. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go. Like this is horrible. But like, I don't know. That sounds I, like you do believe, mate. mate do, you, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I feel like on, on like a base level, like. There's got to be, right? But mm. at the same time, my rational brain is just like, nah. Do you know what I mean? Head, yeah. head and heart stuff. I get it. Yeah. Uh, I would Adam, be good, though. Pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? One I'm, I, I mean, I'm I'm not a fan, but I ain't going to bash you for it. It's funny when people say fruit doesn't belong on pizza and then they have a tomato base. That's the funniest thing. It's Valid. literally fruit. Yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but it's a tomato fruit, mate. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go for it. I'm much more like a savoury person. But it tastes like ketchup. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. good. It's a no from me on pineapple on pizza, mate. But but no judgment. No, nah, no judgment. I'm not a hater. I'm Fair judgment. enough. Uh, Sam, this comes from Dan, the drummer of the thrash metal band Crossfire. What is, what is the most you've ever drunk and what was the result of that drunkenness? Oh. 
Oh dear. Oh dear. Like, well, for like, I don't really drink anymore. Um, mm -hmm. like for for that reason entirely. Um, but like when I was younger, like what like I remember like we went. I went to like a house party one time. Um, and it was just like the most fucked thing I've done. And literally, me like me and my friend, like, my friend Gareth, like we were drinking like bottles of Jägermeister in the fucking in the in the shed. And I think we literally did about two bottles of Jägermeister each or some <sighs> shit like. But like we're like we're, doing, we're like 17, 18 years old at this point. Do you know what I mean? So we don't know what we're doing. Like, do you know what I mean? We don't, like we don't know. Yeah, two bottles of Jägermeister. I can do that. Little I don't. Know, I wake up on the kitchen floor. My eyebrows gone. My beard's gone. Do you know what I mean? Half my head's been shaved, and I'm just like, oh, okay. This is this is now my reality in it, and my eyebrows have never grown back since. And I and I regret drinking so much for that reason. <laughs> they used to be great, and now look at him, a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jägermeister, the curse of many people's mm. life. The last, put it this way, the last time I drank Jägermeister, I was throwing up in um, uh, a drain in Berlin. So Maybe. yeah, that was the last time I've bloody done it. Yeah, I, well, I, th I genuinely think the last time I did was probably like on my twenty first birthday. I was like, I think I was in Leeds, and literally like the day after, I was in like Leeds High Street, just like my head down a bin, just going, Ugh. and I was like, in I was like in Weatherspoons, like asleep on the fucking chaise, and it's like, oh okay, what's this going wrong? It's not good. It's not good. All right, Adam, what's the most impressive thing you've ever seen in the world? God. Uh... Mm. It might have to be Meshuggah Live. Like, it, was <laughs> it, it was literally a mind blown, man. Like I, I, I knew they were going to be insanely tight, but when when you go like you hear it on record, and you're like, especially when you hear about like the older stuff not being to a click or anything, then you go and see it live, and you're like, it's just wild how four or five dudes can be that in sync after, especially considering their age as well. Like they're all old boys now. Like, mm. Yeah, mm. I'm trying to think if there's anything more impressive than the sugar I've ever seen. Um, Your face in the mirror. Oh yeah, stop it. Do you know um, I mean? No, I think it might actually be the sugar was the most impressive thing <laughs> I've ever seen. It mate. might actually be the sugar, mate. Yeah. That's... Do you uh, do you understand though? Um, do you understand that? Do you understand the point of view that while. A person might love Sugar or like might sorry admire the um incredible abilities of the band that 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 person also finds them quite boring. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I've got um mates that have said you know like the riffs are cool, but because it's just kind of like open to one to occasionally another note and it's just all groove based, mm. the vocals don't necessarily go from like low to high. He just has his kind of like the Sugar range. A lot of people just kind of like. Mm. Yeah, they started out cool, but now I've stopped paying attention. I'm just not really into it, but I love all that stuff. I love just technical grooves and yeah. getting, I know, I never getting got, weird with it. I never got into them too. No, nah, you're so. not a fan, are you? No, nah, like, but it's not Katy Perry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> no. I I asked that because um, they obviously headlined Bloodstock last year, and mm. uh, it was the I'd seen them when I was a lot lot younger back at. Uh, this story of two long gone in London and I always remember liking them and I don't listen to a lot of them on record but I watched them at Bloodstock and I was bored shitless to put it simply um but I seem to be alone in that mindset and you know when you kind of feel like you're on an island on your own and you're like look I get it I really think they're brilliant at what they do but I found it really boring <laughs> yeah I mean I watched the um because they posted the on YouTube didn't they they posted mm. this on YouTube. Mm. I, I I watched most of that and I was like yeah this is sick I'd love to be in the crowd, but I, I guess that can happen though, because like I said, it's all very kind of like not monotone, but it's all set in the yeah, it's it's mostly the same thing with different experimentations and variations of the same thing. No, exactly. Which is really cool if you're a big nerd, but not so cool if you just want to have a good time at Bloodstock. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Who knows? That's tasteful, yeah. Like just following knock loose as well. Like, do you know what I mean? How can you follow that? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Beam trigger. Or not. Uh, like, Sam, <laughs> your happy place. Where is it? Ah, oh, happy place. Uh, probably like sat in the dark somewhere. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I like dark. I'm pretty. I'm a weirdo, bro. Like, is I'm a bit of yeah. I don't know. Um, happy place. That's a very strange. Playing roller coaster tycoon. <laughs> yeah, probably playing roller coaster tycoon or like like going to like Port Park or somewhere like that. Do you know what I mean? I love a bit, bit of a fucking roller coaster geek. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> Watching some documentary on World War Two, like that's probably like the reality. <laughs> like, I'm a uh, very boring kind of guy, really. But 
I'm going to do one more round of these, one more each. Adam, uh, how do you like your steak done? A controversial question. Uh, back in the cow, mate. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 I'm vegetarian. <laughs> you might want to ask. Wait, no, you're vegan, are you? I'm vegetarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're asking the wrong guys. <laughs> no worries. How do you like your tofu done? Uh, oh, yeah. No, that is a good question. Pretty much dehydrated. Yeah, and then with with the block, you can kind of go like slits in it. Put your seasoning on that, so the slit, the all the seasoning goes in the slits, and then you fry it upside down that way, all soaks into the tofu. Because tofu oh, can nice. be really, really boring, mm. so you got to kind of get weird with it to make it taste really good. We're also going to make our own cooking channel soon, as you, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, I thought you were serious for a second yeah. there. <laughs> you <Yeah>. imagine? <laughs> no. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sam, tell me the worst joke you know. The worst joke I know? Uh, why is there no medication in the jungle? Because the parrots eat them all. <laughs> Outstanding. I love that. <laughs> that is my it's favorite. Like worst, joke. best joke, isn't it? Oh, it's my favorite joke. Your best worst like, joke. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I only remember one joke, and that is that one. That is like, that that one. one. <laughs> I love it. I've got one more, but I'd love you. I want you both to answer this one, really, particularly as you've talked about influence and things like that. So, name one band or artist you'd one day love to tour with. That's a fucking question. Um, I mean, there's like, there is so many, right? But, like, it would be so good to go on tour with a band like a band like Knock Loose or a band like a band like, I don't know, a band like Limp Biscuit or a band like Corn. Do you know what I mean? Because we, we all like. Oh, that would be crazy. Yeah, like we all love new metal and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can really hear it in our music. Do you know what I mean? We just love bouncy shit and like and I feel like those shows go off so hard. Like when you especially when you go and see Limp Biscuit live, it's like, oh shit, like these guys are fat. Like like and like, I think that's and that's changed over like years. I feel like then finally getting the respect they deserve. Um but yeah, like someone like Limp Biscuit or someone like because you know the, you just know the vibe's gonna be nuts as soon as you mm. do it. But do I kind of go not like the other way, but uh, I'd love to go out with someone like that's a little bit different from us. Maybe someone like Turnstile or something that like pull in massive crowds at the moment. Yeah, uh. I don't like Turnstile, but I take massive inspiration from this, especially their older stuff, where it's like yeah, that like true hardcore sound or whatever you want to call it. It's just hardcore yeah. in it, but yeah, yeah, someone someone like that, someone that's a bit different from us. That that would be really cool. Yeah. To be fair, if I had any choice, it would be Mike and Michael Romance. Yeah, that'd be mm. I don't, I don't feel like we'd fit on that bill very well. Uh, like, but um, I, I'm, I, I think every band should play with any band in the entire world because I personally love a variety, a varied. I mean, oh, it's all good and proper. Here's a six band, all based in a hardcore metalcore world, and that's fantastic and that's great. But you know, if you go into say, see, let's say I was seeing Alpha Wolf, and they said, "Oh, our support is a black metal band." Uh, I would be fascinated to see that because it means there's going to be different like sets of crowds there and so on. Um, there's yeah. I don't you know Avatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they tend to do that, and like um, I think a few years ago they they brought out Mastiff, a UK sort of sludge noise band, as well with them as one of the supports and stuff like that. It was such a contrast. I absolutely love that. So to see you guys play with My Chemical Romance and hell, let's create a bill. We got Limp Biscuit, My Chemical Romance, Corn. Uh, um, all the higher up, a couple of bands, you guys as well. The amount of different people you'd reach through that, people that yeah, don't normally it. listen, that would it's it's it would be phenomenal. I oh, know, yeah, exactly. Like that. I, and I think it's because like we all come from like different sort of scenes. Do you know what I mean? Like like what, you're like very metal, like a hardcore scene. It's like I'm very fucking emo, like from the emo kind of side. Do you know what I mean? And we've got like all the, all the other boys like Death Corey and like from like, metalcore. Like do you know what I mean? So I feel like our influences are so like all over the shop. Do you know what I mean, like we all just love different stuff. Like yeah, I'm... from different ages as well. Because yeah, well, like mid mid twenties, mm. Pat and Bob are like early thirties, and Harvey's eighteen. Yeah, so, so like, like we pull from a lot of different generations <laughs> of kind of music influence. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit it's mad. Cool. It is a bit mad, but like I know what you mean though, because it's like variation is cool, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fun shows. I just want to see you guys be as successful as you possibly can be, starting with this Friday, the 15th of March, and the release of Drowning, the full EP, of course, and the uh, album uh, EP release shows later. If you're in London, make your way to the Black Heart as well in April for those. Um, gents, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Lots of Wish you lots of success for the next couple of months. Easy, man. All right, thanks thank so you very much for having us, man. It, Thank you very much for watching. 
If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at GBHBL.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.